Hey, welcome back to the sex talk. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about boundaries and why setting them might be really difficult. sex talk so i posted on my tiktok one of my older videos and i'll link to it today if i can if i can find it um a story about it was a safe sex video and the story was about this fella who was a sex educator and actually used to pass out condoms on santa monica boulevard in west hollywood so he was really a, a proponent for safe sex. Well, the time came for him to actually be intimate with someone. He met someone that he really liked. And that in that moment, he, it, he didn't even bring up condoms, condom use with that partner. Put himself at risk, right? Because he was so afraid that this person might reject him or any number of things that this person is going to leave, abandon him if he brought up this idea of using condoms. And I actually see this a lot, not specifically around safe sex, but just the, a variety of issues where we just don't speak up for what we really believe in or what we need because there's a deep rooted fear inside of us about rejection, about abandonment. Um, we're scared. And that is none other than trauma. So his trauma of being rejected in the past of not being good enough um, really, really colored his inability to stand up for himself. Similarly, when we have difficulty setting boundaries, that is what is at play. And I get really frustrated because, you know, if, we're, if, you, if you spend any time on Instagram or any time on any of these social media, and you see these memes about boundaries and people just talking ad nauseum about no, just say no. It is not that easy. Trust you me, I am a 40 something year old woman and setting boundaries is still really hard for me. I'm just now getting to a place where I can be better about it, but a lot of that has to do with the way that we're raised, um, the trauma that we have had to live with, um, I, I, it's like, it's, it's so system, it's so systemic and systematic that it's really, really hard to undo the layers. Um, so, you know, what's really important to recognize is that people please, like we talk about people pleasing. So this is, this goes right into people pleasing. And I've done videos on people pleasing and people do a lot of videos on people pleasing. But this is where boundaries and people pleasing sort of the rubber meets the road, so to speak. If you have created this life around people pleasing, setting boundaries is really the last thing that you know how to do, in fact. Setting boundaries can feel really painful, can feel really scary, can feel like there's no way on earth you're gonna ever set that boundary. And you will come up with so many excuses to not set that boundary. Because setting that boundary doesn't even cross your mind. And it might not even be like a serious trauma. It might just be like, that boundary is really scary for you because it means that person's not going to be in your life. It could mean that that person doesn't like you anymore. It could mean that you lose something really, really important. And I think that's why we struggle with setting boundaries is 
that the loss is really scary. Because why is the loss scary? Because without that person, without that thing, whatever it is, we really can't live. We think that we don't, we're that thing, that person is without it, we're nothing, right? It's really a, a self-worth issue. We've been taught to believe that if I lose this person or this thing because I set a boundary, first of all, that in and of itself is catastrophic. It's, we call it catastrophic thinking, right? It's just like, this person is just going to completely abandon me or they're, they're gonna be so angry that everything's gonna blow up. We just don't wanna rock the boat, which is an extreme, you know? There might be some of that that might well happen. Yeah, the person might get disappointed, they might get upset, they might get offended, especially if you've never had boundaries before. So if you've always been this yes person or never set a boundary before and all of a sudden you start doing it, yes, it's very, very possible that they're gonna get their feathers in a ruffle, right? They're gonna feel like what you know what's changed because you're changing a pattern. But the fact that you think that they're going to completely abandon you or that they're gonna get so mad that it's gonna be intolerable, that is the, f the lack of trust in yourself, right? This fear that is so deep within you that you believe that you're not gonna be able to tolerate them being angry at you, them abandoning you, them um, giving you the silent treatment them yelling at you, there being any of this conflict. But the thing about it is, is yes, you can. And once you develop that self-value, that self-worth in yourself to say like, the worst thing that could happen is this person's going to abandon me if I say no. But chances are, they're probably gonna get a little bit mad and I'm actually okay with that. Let them get mad. I'm okay with them getting mad. That only comes when you feel really strong in your, in your core and in your center. And that took a long time. Like you probably have experienced this. Like you don't care if every single person gets mad. There's just a certain type of person or maybe it's a person that represents something or maybe it's one of your, you know, like your lovers or something like that. <laughs> you are you can probably set boundaries in certain areas of your life and then in other areas of your life you can't. It's just those areas in where you feel extreme fear of loss because it's the hardest thing for you is gonna be where you have the hardest time setting boundaries. And more often than not, I would say this is with um, an, an uh, intimate or romantic partner, but it's not necessarily um, it doesn't have to be an intimate or romantic partner. It can be an employer or employee. It can be a boss. It can be everybody. <laughs> um, so really what this video is about is if you are a people pleaser and you have a difficult time setting boundaries, the thing that you really truly need to work on is self-trust, is trusting yourself and your resilience and knowing that you've got that resilience inside you already, that you're going to be okay, that you're going to heal if someone gets upset with you, if they abandon you, um, that you are strong and that you can handle it, that you can seek shelter or safety if it becomes really dangerous. You know, we're talking about I understand like in emotional abuse situations, people pleasing may be your only option because they might be dangerous. Um, and there are other ways that you can set boundaries for yourself that yes, chances are they're going to get very, very angry. And so people that are in really abusive situations have a really hard time with this um, because your life is at stake and 100% I believe you and I understand. Um, 
And I want you to know that you are also strong and that you can find a way. Yes, it might have to be more strategic if you're dealing with a very dangerous person. Even emotionally abusive people can be very dangerous. Gaslighters can be extremely dangerous and scary. So I 100% understand that that is really scary. The thing that is keeping you stuck in these very scary situations and unable to set boundaries is the lack of belief in yourself. And this is this is an outside job that has been done to you over the course of many, many years, maybe from the very first day that you were born, people telling you that you weren't good enough, people telling you that you would amount to nothing, people rejecting you, making you feel like you're repulsive, despicable, and you believing it. And you believe it only because there's no other story. There's no other person telling you, no, that, that's a lie. You're actually really great. You're actually really amazing. You're actually really wonderful at all of these things. Until we hear those things, it's really hard to undo those stories. So if you're in a situation where you're hearing that on a regular basis, it's gonna be really hard for you to believe that you have the value and the worth inside of you to get out of the situation. So your, your task at hand is to figure out where you're gonna find that self-worth from. If you're watching this video and you have no one in your life that feeds you any positive feedback at any point in time, then there's no way in, on earth that you're gonna believe that you are worth anything of value. But if you can think of one person, I don't care if it's your cat, I don't care if it's some neighbor that you see every so often, if you can think of one being that relies on you, that needs you, that trusts you, that believes in you, that's all you need to know that you are worth something. So I really want you to think of who that one person is and chances are you know more than, more than one. Chances are you've got several people like that in your life. So I really want you to think about that because the real, the only real true way that we're gonna learn how to stop being people pleasers and how to have really, really good boundaries is to believe in ourselves, um, believe in our, you know, know that our self-worth and our value is really truly worth something. And without it, we're gonna be stuck in these abusive situations with no boundaries for a really long time. Sex Talk.